our uh, research group is part of the um, Department of Molecular Biomedical Research of the Flemish Institute of Biotechnology and the University of Ghent. And together with the group of Rudy Beard, we study the molecular mechanisms behind inflammatory uh, processes and inflammatory pathologies. So we mainly focus on the in vivo context um, using uh, state-of-the-art gene technology in mice. So what we do in fact is we generate mutant uh, mouse lines and we uh, characterize these mice in um, specific uh, mouse models of inflammatory pathologies. Multiple sclerosis is the most common autoimmune inflammatory disease of the brain and has an incidence of about 0.1% in the Western population. And for Belgium this means about 10,000 uh, patients. The cause of the disease is still uh, unknown, but it is generally considered to be an autoimmune inflammatory uh, pathology, which is characterized by massive demyelination of the brain and by axonal um, damage. So the two uh, very important cell types in MS are oligodendrocytes, which are the cell types which produce myelin uh, and, the, and the myelin sheet around uh, axons, and neurons. And the loss of neurons is in fact directly associated with the clinical manifestations of the pathology, uh, being uh, sensation deficits, optic neuritis, and progressive paralysis. So what you see in this uh, animation are on one hand oligodendrocytes in blue, which produce the myelin. And this myelin is very important to insulate, to uh, ensheat the axons, uh, which is very important for uh, an efficient um, transmission of electrical signals between neighboring neurons. So you can in fact compare it with an electrical wire, which also needs to be insulated to have um, efficient transmission of uh, electricity. So what happens now in MS is that this um, myelin uh, is, gets lost, causing problems with the transmission of the electrical signals between the neurons. So in fact we can say that multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease with a very uh, with a central role uh, of inflammation and that's also the reason why we are interested in studying this disease. Central in inflammation and inflammatory processes is the activation of a protein with the name nucleofactor kappa B or NF kappa B. So it, the NF kappa B gets activated by many different uh, stimuli, and once it is active, it drives all kinds of inflammatory responses. And because it's so central in these um, in these pathways, it needs to be tightly controlled. Because if not, you can ha you can create conditions of chronic inflammation, as we see it in many uh, inflammatory diseases. So in, uh, a cell uh, employs many different mechanisms to keep uh, nf kappa b and inflammation, inflammation in check. And one of these mechanisms is the activation of a protein with the name A20. A20 can be considered as an inflammatory turnoff because in fact it turns off inflammatory processes once these have done their job. So based on our findings and of course also based on findings from the scientific literature, we now know that A20 is definitely very important in uh, controlling uh, inflammatory processes and inflammatory diseases and we think that defects in proper A20 function um, may give rise to um, disease development. So nf kappa B plays a real fundamental role in the pathogenesis of multiple sclerosis. We now know, for example, that nf kappa B activation in T and B cells, which are immune cells in the periphery, is crucial for the induction of the disease. We also know, on the other hand, that nf kappa B activation within the central nervous system is also crucial during multiple sclerosis pathogenicity. For instance, we could show that genetic inhibition of nf kappa B in all cells of the central nervous system resulted in protection from multiple sclerosis. It's also worth mentioning that nf kappa B activation in different cell types in the central nervous system results in different effects. nf kappa B activation in oligodendrocytes and neurons, for example, is believed to protect them to un from undergoing cell death, whereas nf kappa B activation in astrocytes and microglia, which are believed to be the effector cells during multiple sclerosis, results in the production of chemokines and cytokines, which are detrimental during multiple sclerosis pathogenesis. One of the goals uh, in our project, which is funded by the Queen Elizabeth Medical Foundation, is to further understand the role of nf kappa B during multiple sclerosis pathogenesis, and more in particular, um, to study how the activation and regulation of A20 influences multiple sclerosis. Our basic approach is to create mice which lack the A20 gene specifically in certain cell types of the central nervous system or in cell types of the peripheral immune response. As a second approach, we then further want to characterize molecularly 
how uh, the lack of A20 influences multiple sclerosis. So with these studies, uh, we hope to contribute to a better understanding of the molecular mechanisms which drive multiple sclerosis pathology. And hopefully this will lead one day to the development of new drugs which can help patients suffering from the disease. Of course, as we all know, scientific research is very expensive, but luckily there are some organizations and foundations which uh, invest in um, scientific research. And to conclude, I would like to thank the Queen Elizabeth Medical Foundation for believing in our research and for providing uh, financial uh, support for these studies.